Hi friends, in this video we are going to discuss about roles of communication. Before coming to the content, friends if you are watching our channel first time or not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. Also don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get a notification message whenever we upload a new video. First of all we will see communication fundamentals. All communication methods have three elements in common, source or center, destination or receiver, channel or media. Here we can see the protocols are necessary for effective communication, such as an identified center and receiver, common language and grammar, speed and timing of delivery, confirmation or acknowledgement requirements. Here we can see the protocols used in network communications, such as message encoding, message delivery options, message formatting and encapsulation, message timing, and message size. We will see all these protocols one by one. First of all, we will come to message encoding. Encoding is the process of converting information into another acceptable form for transmission. Decoding reverses this process in order to interpret the information. Next is a message formatting and encapsulation. When a message is sent from source to destination, it must use a specific format or structure. Message formats depends on the type of message and the channel that is used to deliver the message. Each computer message is encapsulated in a specific format called a frame before it is sent over the network. Next is the message size. When a long message is sent from one host to another over a network, it is necessary to break the message into smaller pieces. Each piece is sent in a separate frame. Each frame has its own addressing information. A receiving host will reconstruct multiple frames into the original message. Next is the message timing. For this we have three protocols, we can say three rules. First one is access method. It determines when sender is able to send a message. Second one is flow control. How much information can be sent and the speed that it can be delivered. Now coming to the third one, response timeout. Hosts on the network have rules that specify how long to wait for responses and what action to take if a response timeout occurs. Now we will see various message delivery options. A message can be delivered in three ways, uh, such as unicast, multicast and broadcast. Coming to unicast, a one-to-one -one delivery option is referred to as a unicast, meaning there is only a single destination for the message. Next is the multicast. Multicasting is the delivery of the same message to a group of host destinations simultaneously. And finally, broadcast. Broadcasting represents a one-to-all message delivery option. Now we will see the working of this unicast and broadcast using our Cisco Packet Tracer. Here we will use 2960 switch, then some PCs. Okay, we will connect all these PCs. We will give automatically choose connection type. Here we are creating a, a simple network uh, to understand the working of uh, unicast and uh, uh, broadcast. Also, in the next packet tracer activity video, uh, you can see uh, the working of uh, all these uh, unicast, uh, multicast and broadcast. Here we are showing only unicast and broadcast. We will assign IP address for these PCs. Desktop IP configuration. We will assign a class C IP address. 192.168 dot one dot one we will copy this address 
then the submit to mask default gateway not required same way we will assign IP address for uh, other PCs here we will give 1.2 1 1.3 1 1.4 1 1.5 and 1.6 we will check the connectivity we we'll go to desktop, command prompt, and we will ping to the other PCs. Oh, we did not give the ping command. Ping. It's working. It's a unique cast message. Anyway, we will see that. We will ping to 3. We will ping to 4. ping to 5 also we'll ping to 1.6 it's working next what we are going to do we will go to this uh, simulation mode okay and here we can see show all or none so we will click on it so that we can see even list filters visible events none so we'll go to edit filters and here we will select only ICMP and here we can see visible events only ICMP right so now we are going to uh, select this uh, add complex PDU and we will uh, come to PC0 and we will uh, change this PDU settings so here we will give a destination IP address so we are going to send a message to 192.168.1.4 we are not going to give the source IP address because we are going to send it from this PC0 we will give the sequence number as 1 then we will give one short time we will give 0 seconds okay so now we will create PDU. Here we are going to send a unique cast message from this PC0 to this PC3. So we can open this uh, PDU and uh, see the details. Here we can see the source IP address. Uh, it's from 1.1. .1. And here we can see the destination IP address. Uh, it's only to this uh, 1.4. Now we will uh, give capture or forward. Here we can see it goes to switch. From this switch, it will go to only this PC3 because it's a one to one communication. So we will give again capture, then forward. Here we can see it goes to PC3. Now this PC3 will send back an acknowledgement to PC0. We can see that send back to switch and then we can see it goes to PC0 so we can see it's a uh, one to one or unicast communication now we will see a broadcast communication again we are going to select this uh, complex PDU coming to this PC0 here in this destination IP address we will give 255.255.255.255 it's a broadcast address source IP address okay we are going to send from this PC0 sequence number we will give us 1 then this time 0 seconds create PDU now we will verify this PDU we will click on it and coming to this out layer so here we can see the source IP address it's 1.1 .1, ok and here we can see the destination IP address it's a broadcast address 
okay right so here we are going to give a capture or forward we can see this message goes goes to this uh, suit zero now what happens we can see this message uh, will go to all the pcs except this pc zero okay we will like, give capture or forward again and we can see that it goes to all the pcs this is nothing but the broadcast communication now all these pcs will reply back to this pc zero uh, it's a one-to-one -one communication so again we will give capture or forward we can see all these five pdus come to the switch now one by one it will go to this pc zero one two three four and finally five so as i told if you like to uh, get more idea about unicast broadcast and multicast you can go to the next cisco packet tracer activity video so friends that's all in this video so stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video thank you